the first force that we're going to talk about today is weight. It's probably the easiest of the forces that we can possibly talk about. We all know what weight is. It's how much you weigh, but that's not a very useful definition. Weight is actually defined as the force due to gravity Alright, so if weight is the force due to gravity, that means weight is a force. And it's often called Fg, like this. This is what your textbook does. And I may switch between these two notations using capital W or F sub G. Um, you should just know that they're interchangeable, that weight is the force due to gravity. Now, since it's a force, we know that all force equals mass times acceleration. Well, weight is the force due to gravity. It's still going to be mass times the acceleration. Well, what's the acceleration due to gravity? G, which, you know, G is our negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Right? So if I ask you to find the weight of an object, it's simply mass times gravity. Now, this is even true, now G isn't always 9.8, G on Earth is negative 9.8, um, G on the Moon is like 1.7 or something, so that might matter. Just know that weight is the force due to gravity no matter where you are, anywhere in the universe, the acceleration due to gravity is what you're going to use for your acceleration here, instead of just A, you're going to use G. All right. And since this is a force, weight is measured in Newtons. So we're going to convert from kilograms to newtons using gravity. You know, basically I can ask you for, I can give you weight, ask for mass, and I can give you mass, ask, mass, ask for weight. Either one should be fine. That shouldn't be a problem for anyone at all. Okay, so weight as a best friend. So imagine that, I'll undo that, maybe I can get a more. Imagine that we have an object resting on the ground. Maybe it's just some box or something. Okay, It has a weight. So there is a force pushing down. I would pretend that I just drew that straight down. Weight. Force of gravity. Okay. Weight's best friend... Like, well, let me back up. We learned from Newton's third law that for every force there's an equal and opposite force. So since we have a force straight down, weight, we've got to have an equal and opposite force straight up, and this is called the normal force. It's an abbreviated FN. So it's the normal force. Why is it called normal? Well in mathematics and um, science, normal means perpendicular. And the normal force is always perpendicular to the surface. So the normal force is perpendicular to the ground. Now, if we had an inclined plane, and we'll talk more about those, those in our next lesson, if we had an object sitting on an inclined plane, we would have weight, which would be straight down, But the normal force is still going to be perpendicular to the surface. So the normal force would be off this way, and it wouldn't be as much as the weight. Now, think about that. Because if you put something on a ramp like this, what does it want to do? It wants to slide down. And we'll talk more about what's going on with incline planes next time, but it's kind of a teaser. Our normal force is just always perpendicular to the surface, no matter what. So. If our weight is 12 newtons, our normal force will be 12 newtons in the other direction. We should probably make one negative for consistency. All right. So if we define down as negative, which we usually do, then the normal force will be 12 units up. Force does have direction. It's a vector. So that's what a normal force is. And that's pretty easy. You just have to remember that it's opposite. Well, that on a flat surface, it's equal and opposite the weight. 
on, but it's always perpendicular to the surface on which something is resting. That's the normal force. So for our next force we need to talk about, let's take a moment. Um, on the top of your desk, you should have some books. You probably have a physics book. So look at your physics book. And what I want you to do is I want you to push on your physics book with enough force, well, with the right amount of force that the book doesn't actually move. So I want you to apply a force. Um, I'll call it force FP, force of push. Push on the physics book enough that it does not move, but, um, yeah, and think about what's happening there while I draw a picture of a puppy. Okay, done? So, let's think about this. Um, let me erase my puppy so you don't get distracted. Bye-bye, puppy. So, let's think about this. Um, you pushed on the book, but it didn't move. It's possible to do that. If you don't push hard enough, it doesn't move. So, you're applying a force, but the book isn't moving. In theory, if there's a force, then there should be an acceleration, right? Aren't force and acceleration linked? So if there was an acceleration, if the book didn't start to move or it didn't change its motion in any way, that must mean what this really is, is this is net force. So there must be something that was counteracting your pushing force. And you might say, well, it's the weight of the book. No, that can't be right, because the weight of the book is in this direction. The weight is straight down. Down can't counteract left and right. Well, maybe it's the normal force. No, that doesn't work either, because the normal force is straight up. There must be some force this direction that is equal and opposite the force of you pushing on the book. What force is that? If you said friction, then you got it. This is the force of friction. Friction is basically a force that resists motion. It wants motion to either never start or it wants motion to stop. It wants to make motion more difficult. So there are two types of friction. There are static and kinetic friction. Static friction Static friction is friction that you must overcome in order to move. So it's when an object is at rest. you have to overcome the static friction. So this was static friction that kept your book from sliding when you pushed on it. The friction was counteracting your push. All right. There's also oops, sliding friction. And that's friction for when your object is in motion. Now, anyone who's ever... Oh, hold on, I'm going to work some movie magic. There we go. Now, anyone who's ever tried to move a refrigerator knows that you have to push really hard in order to get it to move. But then once it's moving, 
it gets a lot easier to push. You need a much smaller force. I'll call these FP. Much smaller force to push it once you get it moving. And that's because this is a fundamental truth about physics. A sliding friction, or excuse me, let me start with static friction, is always greater than sliding friction. So once you can get something moving, like I said, if you've ever pushed anything heavy, you've noticed this, if you can get it moving, then it's much easier for it to keep moving. And I didn't know for years that this was actually a truth about the universe, but it is. Once you get something moving, it's much easier to push than to get it moving in the first place. So your force for, of sliding friction is always less than the force of static friction. So that's something to remember. That'd be a good test question. All right, so how can we figure out friction? What can we do with friction? Well, what actually creates friction? Well, there's nothing physically pushing backwards if you're trying to push on a refrigerator. What's It's really happening down here where the refrigerator touches the ground. You know, what, if we could like zoom in, we'd see like little irregularities in the bottom of the refrigerator and little irregularities in the ground. And they would kind of catch on each other as you try to move this this way and this would go that way. They kind of catch on each other and they don't want to let let the refrigerator move. So what actually creates the friction is the interaction between the weight and the normal force. Because even though I have these arrows drawn different, typically we draw forces from the center of an object just because it's easier to do. Really what's happening is we've got a, a downward force from the weight going here and an upward force from the normal force going here and that creates a pinch. The pinch is where the friction comes from. Even though the friction acts this direction, it's the pinch that creates that force. Right? So what that means is that and the way that we've defined it in physics is that the friction is proportional to, and I'll write this, friction force is proportional to normal force. Now, why do we say that it's proportional to the normal force and not the weight? Well, if we think about our ramp, and we'll study these later, inclined planes, the weight and the normal force are not always the same. Okay, so they found by experimentation, by they I mean physicists, that normal force is what we have to worry about. Now, how can we figure out friction? Well, there's a very simple general formula that we can use. And that formula is force of friction, F sub F, equals mu, so like a U with a tail in front, it's a mu, it's a Greek letter, those of you who are hope to pledge next year, so you'll learn what a mu is, times the normal force. So the force of friction equals mu times the normal force. Simple formula. Now, what the heck is mu? Mu is a very powerful Pokemon. Now, mu is something called the coefficient of friction. Alright, what does that mean? 
Well, the coefficient of friction is just a constant. This isn't a variable. So it's just a number that we can either figure out or look up that varies depending on the two surfaces. So if you have wood sliding over concrete, then the coefficient of friction, so we can look that up, um, would probably be, you know, maybe we have point for, I don't know, I made that up. I don't know. All right. But something like socks on a varnished floor would be something like 0 0.02. The higher the coefficient of friction, the greater the friction. The lower the coefficient of friction, the lower the friction. Now, there are usually different coefficients of friction for sliding or static. For instance, if we have a wood block sliding over a wooden floor, if it's sliding friction, then mu would equal about 0.2. However, if it's static friction, then mu would equal about 0.4. Right? This is always true. Like we talked about, static force is always greater than sliding force of friction. The static mu is only to, always going to be greater than the sliding mu. Now, a quick aside, just before I forget to mention this, sliding friction is sometimes called kinetic friction. So you'll see that sometimes. This is the notation your book uses. So they'll put mu sub k and mu sub s. And that may be a better way to do it. I'm, I will just occasionally say sliding because that's what I'm used to. Um, but I may use these interchangeably also. And it, may, it might be a good thing because depending on what text you're using in the future, or what test you're trying to take, they may say sliding or kinetic. You need to understand they mean the same things. That's the friction of motion, basically. So anyway, so for our friction problems, here are, here's the basic roadmap for friction problems. We're ultimately going to use that formula I just gave you. I'll write it again. Force of friction equals mu times normal force. Now notice that when I was writing mu earlier, when I wrote mu equals 0.4, I didn't give it a unit. Well notice that we're saying force equals force. So that's newtons equals newtons. So mu doesn't have a unit. It's just a number. It's just a scalar. So here we go. So basically we'll either be given mu and the normal force and we'll have to find the force of friction. Maybe we'll get be given the force of friction and mu and be asked to find the normal force we could be given the force of friction and the normal force and be asked to find mu. All of those could happen. Okay, also be aware that I could just give you mass and mu and expect you to find force of friction. How? Well, because if you have mass, then you can find the force of gravity, which is mg, and you know g. And if you know the force of gravity, that equals negative normal force. And since g is negative, we're going to get a negative force of gravity, so we'll get a positive normal force. So if you know mass, you can get normal force, which means you can get friction force if you have mu. All right. Now, like I said, I'll, you will all, always either be given mu or you'll be asked for mu. I'm not, not going to ask you to memorize any tables of mu or anything. If you look on page, what is it, page 138 of your book, there are a couple of common ones listed there. I'm just going to provide you with mu in here. I don't think it's really useful for us to memorize those. But um, it may be useful for you to think about what's going to end up giving a higher mu and what's going to give a lower mu. You know, polished steel over 
plastic is probably a lower mu than like I don't know uh, wood over concrete and it's probably going to slide a little bit easier you know so that might be something useful for you to think about I'm actually going to work an example for you here because this is a really simple formula just if you know what normal force is and basically that it's negative weight and you know mu it's really easy to find friction force and you know you just rearrange this however you need to so um, that's about it for today pretty simple formulas basic stuff to remember please don't um, act like this stuff is hard